the good night. Meet the good knight. Greetings, I am Sir Leonard of Castle Lionheart. Come and see my favorite place. From here, there is a wonderful view over my family's lands. I'm on my way to a knight's tournament, which is the reason for all my armor. It keeps me nice and safe when fighting. I've named my trusty weapon Swish the singing sword because it makes such an amazing noise when it moves through the air. I have a decorative line on the top of my helmet. The shield shows my coat of arms, a golden line on a red background. Chainmail protects me from getting injured during battle. I always carry my sword in a sheath. Swish the singing sword is long and heavy, so I have to be strong to carry it. My horse Thunderfoot, a truly splendid stallion, Thunderfoot is the perfect horse for a knight. Fast and agile, but strong enough to carry me in all of my heavy armor. I want him to look his best at the tournament, so he's dressed in a beautiful saddle cloth. I ride Thunderfoot every day over the long distances between our farms and villages. The farmers here use big horses, which are even stronger than oxen and can pull a plow or cart. Roads on Lionheart lands are really bumpy. That's why I've loaded my tournament equipment onto the pack horse that my squires Edwin and Osbert are leading. So they can come along on all my adventures. You can too. The Knights Tournament The King has invited lots of us knights to a tournament held in a specially prepared field outside the walls of a town. I'm looking forward to taking on my fellow knights. On the first day, we all take part in a jousting competition. In this sport, two knights ride at each other and try to knock the other one off his horse with a lance. On the second day, two groups of knights put on a mock battle, pretending they are fighting fiercely against each other. Afterwards, we celebrate all night long with music and dancing. It's so much fun! A Knight's Day After each day's contest, I practice sword fighting with my friends. They are teaching me new tips and tricks for using my shield and helping me to become a master swordsman. In the evening, the king invites us to a celebration where we are to take part in a song contest. It's lucky I wrote a tune this afternoon. My performance received lots of applause and a damsel even gives me her handkerchief as a token of her admiration. When the tournament is finished, it's time to hurry back to Castle Lionheart. As a brand new knight, one of my duties is to help my father defend our lands. My home castle, Lionheart. I was only away for a week at the tournament, but even so, I got a bit homesick. As Thunderfoot takes me back, I spot Castle Lionheart in the distance. It sits high up on a steep hill, complete with walls, battlements, and ramparts. There are also towers, a keep, and a big gatehouse with our splendid coat of arms on it. Suddenly, a horn sounds. Matthew, the watchman, has spotted me. My father, Sylvester, is standing in front of the castle, waving. I can see my mother, Sylvia, and 
sister Lenora leaning from the windows in a great hall. They see me and call out a greeting. I'm so glad to see my family once again. When Leonard met Thunderfoot, youngster Leonard was riding through the countryside that belonged to his father, Lord Sylvester of Castle Lionheart. As the intrepid knight traveled through the beautiful landscape, he patted his stallion's neck. Leonard had removed his helmet and was taking the opportunity to enjoy the feeling of warm sunshine on his face. Just lovely! It was on a summer's day, just like this one, that he had met his trusty steed, Thunderfoot, for the first time. Leonard had been on his old horse heading to the king's palace, Castle Magnifico. In Leonard's pocket was an invitation for the royal family to come to a great feast at Castle Lionheart. As Leonard rode along, all the details of that day came back to him. My dear Thunderfoot, he said to his horse, do you remember when we met for the first time? Thunderfoot answered with a loud neigh as if he'd understood the question. That was a very special day indeed, the young knight continued. I'm so happy that we found one another, but how did it happen? Leonard cast his mind back. On his way to see the king, he had spotted another knight on the road, wearing a coat of chainmail and a tunic. The man was obviously injured. Maybe he'd been caught in an ambush. The exhausted unknown knight was clinging onto his horse and there was a danger that he might fall off and break his neck. As quick as a flash, Lenard rode right up to him and grabbed the horse's reins so he could support the other knight if he started to fall off. Then Lenard had a thought. I will have to take the knight with me to see the king, he said to himself. Once we get there, we'll work out what to do next. So together the little trip rode on slowly until the outline of Castle Magnifico appeared on the horizon. When the group arrived at the king's castle, they were received with great excitement. The sentries had spotted Leonard and his rounded companion from far away and the doors were opened wide so that they could ride straight in. Leonard was astonished at the clamor in the palace. Even King Luther himself came rushing towards them in a most unroyal fashion. What had happened to cause such a commotion? Well, it turned out that the king's younger brother had gone out riding earlier and had not returned. King Luther had been worried about his brother. In fact, he had been just about to send out his riders to look for him when the two new arrivals were spotted. Amazingly, the king shouted out, My brother! Thank heavens you saved! The king was overjoyed that Sir Leonard had brought his brother back to Castle Magnifico as a thank you for his heroic act. He gave Leonard his own royal horse, and that, of course, was the magnificent stallion Thunderfoot. Damsel in distress. At the Grand Falconstone Castle lived a young damsel called Fidelia and her family. One day there was a whirlwind of activity at the castle because everyone was getting ready for a great banquet planned for that evening. At any other time it would have been impossible for a young maiden to escape the watching eyes of her ladies in waiting. But now she spotted her chance. Unobserved for just a moment, Fidelia managed to quietly sneak away. If father finds out, I'll be in so much trouble, she said to herself, hesitating for a split 
second as she stepped out of the palace. Then she tossed her long blonde hair behind her, broke out into a mischievous smile, and ran to her favorite place, a beautiful clearing in the forest. I'm going to make a garland for my hair out of all the pretty blooms, she said delightedly as she picked some lovely flowers. At the same time, Sir Leonard of Castle Lionheart was out riding on his steed Thunderfoot. As soon as we find a meadow, you can have a nice graze on some grass, Thunderfoot, the young knight told his horse. You've certainly earned a rest. Finally, the forest started to thin out and they came to a lovely meadow of wild flowers. But then, at the clearing's edge, they spotted a huge brown bear pawing at the trunk of a gnarled oak tree. Thunderfoot stood rooted to the spot, his hunger forgotten, and Leonard couldn't believe his eyes. Oh no, whispered an amazed Leonard in Thunderfoot's ear. Is that really a maiden sitting up there in the tree? The maiden in question was Fidelia, who had earlier hurried up the tree to escape from the bear. Despite the danger, Leonard didn't hesitate for a second. Gallop, Thunderfoot, gallop, he cried on his master's orders. Help! Help! Thunderfoot broke into a run. Don't be afraid, I'm coming, called Leonard to Fidelia. The young knight approached the dangerous beast. Be off with you, bear, or I'll use my sword to clip your claws, he roared. He swinging his trusty weapon swished through the air. Startled by Leonard's sudden outburst, the bear turned and ran off into the woods. Back at Falconstone Castle, Fidelia's absence had finally been noticed and, as a result, the palace was in total uproar. The damsel's father immediately set off along with two of his soldiers to look for his daughter. Before they even reached the clearing, they spotted Fidelia in the distance. What is my daughter doing up a tree? wondered Lord Falconstone aloud. And who on earth is that young knight up with her? As was befitting of a knight, Sir Leonard quickly helped the damsel down from the tree. And in that moment, as their eyes met, they fell helplessly in love with each other. Fidelia was reunited with her father and excitedly told him all about what had happened. Overjoyed, the nobleman gave her a big hug. My sincere thanks for saving my beloved daughter from the bear, the lord said to the brave knight who was already back in the saddle. It was nothing, murmured Sir Leonard modestly. He raised his hand in farewell and rode off. Goodbye, valiant knight, Lord Falconstone shouted after him. But Sir Leonard had already vanished. Fidelia was starey eyed as she watched him go. I don't even know his name, she sighed to herself. Would the damsel ever see him again? On my way back home, the weather gets colder and colder. Just a mile away from my beloved home, Storm Darcy hits my land, which leads to heavy snow and ice. In a matter of seconds, everything was covered in snow. Finally, I reached my home. Woohoo! Look at my snowy castle, Lionheart! Wow! My family's land is covered in a beautiful blanket of snow. The End
don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye!